Yes. So, you know, we're all the early birds. We're all not punctual birds. So I'm going to start and um, it, it's being recorded. So we'll put it up on the group later. And I, I've asked you all to watch the seminar that I did with Nilachala Prabhu and to ask some questions. And the reason I ask you to answer those questions is to make sure you're listening actively and you're picking up the points. So hands up if you did that homework, if you watched the video and answered the questions. Fantastic. Fantastic. Anyone didn't do it other than Nila Chala because he already did it once with me. So if he didn't do it, I will. But, and undermine, did you watch the video? And yes. Answer it? Fantastic. Yes. By the way, keep yourselves unmuted the entire time unless there's some annoying background noise where you are in which case you can mute yourself. That way you can come in and out really quickly and easily and fluidly. So who else, and who did the little exercise I asked you to do regarding the difference between understanding, paraphrasing and commenting? So Adiganga did it, Ananda Mai did it, Nilachala did it, Renu, you did it, fantastic. Kusum, I, did you do it? Mm -hmm. You were gonna say something, Renu? Yes, I, I did the understanding, commenting and paraphrasing, but I couldn't find the questions because my phone wouldn't allow me to access it. Then I transferred it to my laptop and I couldn't find it. So the questions for that. were uh, the questions were just what are which, which is what is each of these statements? That, oh, those questions. That. <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. The questions you mean, the questions about the video. Okay, what, I don't know that, what they were. Okay, it was just uh, asking you, what do we talk about on this slide? What is meant by this slide like that? Because I was trying to get you to listen actively. One of the, I think one of our worst problems is we listen passively and we, nothing goes in. So it was about a matter of making you think, well, what did they say? And repeating it. That's what I was getting you to do. The thing is, I'm happy for people to follow that format when you're doing the seminars for the first time. But because I'm giving it with you, I want to take you one step further uh, today. You've done that. I don't want to go through those questions with you. Hopefully, if you, if you haven't gone through the questions yet, you may want to go through it later yourselves just to make you actively hear what, what already transpired between Nilachala and myself. But today I want to take it a little bit further if possible. So, um, so I'm just going to speak and I'm going to ask you to interact. I'm going to ask you to reflect back and to um, tell me when you've got questions. Some of the questions I may ask, okay, let's hold that question, write it down and we'll bring it in at the end. But a very important thing is this active hearing. So I will ask you sometimes to actively hear me. Is that okay? So um, I want to start by saying this, that this uh, principle, repeat in your own words the meaning, is one of the most important. I personally think all the principles are one of the most important principles. You know, I could probably say that about all of them. Uh, some of the principles generate the right mood when we discuss with gratitude, humility, and gratefulness. And we say things like, thank you so much for understanding me. And would you like to say more? All those really create a nice kind of like um, friendship between us, which is essential if we're going to um, collaborate in churning the ocean of Shastric wisdom and, and knowledge, you know. So we need to, some of the principles are really, in my mind, geared at generating that right, collaborative, friendly mood between us. And some of the principles really help us to make sure that we're not skimming over valuable jewels and not speculating. Um, who knows the, um, what Lord Brahma says in Canto 10, chapter 14, text three. If you want, you can actually just look that up. Use your devices, use your smartphones, use your VEDA bases, interact with the subject. I find when we use motor skills to find things, find it, it helps us to remember the evidences that we've actually had to look for. And the first one who finds it, please um, read it out the verse. So it's Canto 1. Canto 10, Chapter 14, Text 3. 
Thank you. This one, um, those who even while remaining situated in their established social positions, 1014.3. Yep, please read it aloud. And if you found it, find it, follow with Adi Ganga. So you're reading along with her. So I'll, I'll just read the translation. Those who even while remaining situated in their established social positions, throw away the process of speculative knowledge and with their body, words and mind, offer all respect to descriptions of your personality and activities, dedicating their lives to these narrations, which are vibrated by you personally and by your pure devotees, certainly conquer your lordship, although you are otherwise unconquerable by anyone within the three worlds. Yes. So how do we conquer God? By dedicating ourselves. We don't have to change ashrams. We don't have to change jobs. We don't have to move out of our house. We don't have to go into the forest. We're, we're just wherever we are, Lord Brahma says, your externals is irrelevant. Wherever is natural for you, wherever you're comfortable, stay put. <laughs> don't worry about moving to India. If you want to move to India, do, but you don't need it for spiritual advancement. All you have to do is with your body, mind, and words, dedicate yourselves to understanding the instructions of the Lord and his pure devotees. And you'll very easily conquer the Lord. But he inserts one proviso. But you have to be careful of one thing. What does she say? You have to be careful. Giving up what? Go ahead, Seth Miller. Throw away speculative. Uh, yes, knowledge. yes, yes. Why does he right. say that? Why, why didn't he say, but give up... Um, but make sure you cite um, the, the verses or make sure that you don't look out the window when you're talking. Why didn't he specify, um, give up the speculative process? Go ahead, Neil Chan. Doesn't, doesn't that have to do with um, somewhere else the Lord, the Lord speaks of um, karma and jnana? Um, it's like speculative knowledge. That's that's karma and jnana, isn't it? Okay, that's... you're saying it's got to do with another two processes, yeah. karma and jnana. Okay, nice one. Anyone else? If I was said to you, and my stop murdering. You think why is she saying that? I've never murdered anyone in my life. But if you were to say to me, Chintami, stop overeating. I think, hmm, <laughs> why is she saying that? Probably because I have a tendency to overeat. If I tell you stop doing something, which you rarely do, if ever, that's not very required, is it? So why is Lord Brahma telling us stop speculating? I sh I've given you a huge clue. Go ahead and have a because that's what the, always destroys the original message of God, that's, that speculation. Okay, because that destroys and, the original message. You're getting yes. closer and closer to the answer yeah. I want. And and they are, yeah, they are shadowing over the message by our own ideas. Because we shadow what God, we God wants to say to us. Yeah, we cover over the message with our own ideas. We cover his intended message. Go ahead. Almost yes. where I'm looking for. It's good points. Go ahead, Adiganda. Thank you. Thank you for your enthusiasm to participate. Um, you're making me spoiled for choice. Okay, Adiganga, go ahead. Well, taking the clue that you presented, yeah. is it because we all have a tendency to speculate? Yes. Sometimes yes. we don't even realize we're doing it, but yes. we always make things up in our minds. Yes, yes, on. yes. Fill in the yes. blanks. Yes, yes, because yes. we have this tendency. And I hate to say it, it happens all the time in our devoted community. Because it, it's a very natural tendency, but we tend to make deductions. But if we're not very, worse, very well versed with Shastra, our deductions are often speculative. So I'm gonna give you some examples today of how I, we do deductions too. But we either immediately support, like I'll say, I think what Prabhupada really means here, and then I'll say, I'm going to give you some examples. And I'll say, this is my evidence. If I don't know the evidence, I think I've heard Prabhupada say, I don't know. In the response, we immediately go and say, were we right in our understanding? Let's go see if we can find the evidence now. So he's, Brahma is telling us don't do it because 
unless we're very careful not to, we're likely to start speculating. It's the thing we've got to work. And this repeating your own words, if we learn to do it right, and if you're here, you've probably watched the video or like Milchan, you've done it with me and you're kind of like familiar with it, but we have to realize how to use this principle really well to check ourselves from speculation and to help those whom we're trying to help. Um, when it comes to doing seminars and leading discussion sessions and how to catch the people you're helping from doing it, I would, I'm going to talk about that in, a, uh, in private sessions with you. I know Nilichal and I are going to talk about a Gita discussion. He is um, facilitating. I'm going to talk to him about how he can stop others from doing it. But you can't stop others from doing it if you're not aware that you may be doing it. <laughs> you know and you're not aware that it's happening so I want you to be aware that if we don't learn to repeat back in our own words without if we're going to add deductions we have to evidence our deductions this is why I'm making this deduction um, and without just paraphrasing just part using proper's own words if we use proper's own words either we really haven't understood anything it's just, I don't know how to say his words. <laughs> or we have understood something, but we're not putting it in our own words and we're not giving anyone else a chance to correct us. Um, this is an, a, a, a subject matter that really excites me and I tend to speak faster and faster when I'm really excited. So that's why I'm asking you to leave yourselves unmuted. You can stop me wave your hand, tell me to slow down or just stop so you get a chance to repeat something back. But I want you to please take ownership of making sure that this session works for you. Don't passively hear. If you need to stop me to say, hang on, I just got to repeat that bit back. I'm not sure if I caught that. Let me repeat it back. You stop me, okay? You're not, uh, I know some of you may be complete beginners, but I'm treating you like you're not complete beginners. <laughs> so I'm expecting you to take ownership and stop me and say, look, I need to reflect that back. I, I didn't catch that. Let me just see if I caught it. Are you all comfortable to stop me and take ownership that you get something out of today's session? Yes. yes. You will stop me. Wave your hands. Interrupt. Just say it. <laughs> okay. So where was I in my flow before I said this? Oh, God, what was I saying before I started that? Anyone remember? He was saying if you don't know um, yourself, if, if you don't know kind of that you're speculating yourself, it's hard to teach somebody else and stop somebody else from doing it. And especially if you don't see it happening. And I want to give you what I was going to say. Thank you so much, Edgar. I was going to give you a classic example. I think it's in Bhagavad Gita 261 or 262 per port. Uh, I just find it in my Gita. One of those per port, proper sites, Yamunacharya. Um, actually 260, 6-0. So he cites this verse from Yamunacharya. Since my mind has been engaged in the service of the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, and I have been enjoying an ever new transcendental humor, whenever I think of a sex life with a woman, my face at once turns from it and I spit at the thought. Now, I wasn't there at the time. I joined in 81, but um, some of these senior Prabhupada ladies who were in certain, not all temples, thank, thankfully it didn't happen in all temples, but there were a few temples. Uh, and I use this as a standard example because it's so ludicrous. I hope you'll all be able to see, <laughs> see that. So some of the Brahmacharis were spitting at the Brahmacharinis because when they read this verse and they never told anyone, they never repeated in their own words what they understood it meant. They assumed an understanding, which was, if I see a woman who makes me feel lusty, I spit at the woman. And they were spitting at the Brahmatrinis. Now, what is that called? It's Vaishnav Aparad. And most of those Brahmatrinis, at least I was told, all <laughs> fell down and left. So if we don't say in our own words what I am understanding, it means one of two things. I don't understand or I do understand, but I'm not giving anyone a chance to correct me. So it's really important we put it in our own words. Yeah? And don't just paraphrase. Go ahead, Kristen. Thank you for taking ownership of your own learning. 
Thank you. I think just a point that I would like to reflect on is when we doing understanding, we reflect, it shows if I am able to put it in my own words, it shows I can understand. But if I'm not able to do so, it means I may or may not have understood it. And I don't want to give anybody a chance to correct me. So if I think I'm incorrect, I think I'd rather not say, just say what is written and that is it. So even though I have a wrong understanding, I am reluctant to say it thinking that if I am wrong, then what? Thank you so much for reflecting back. Who else understood it the way Kusum understood it? Because you're giving me a chance to clarify my meaning. Thank you. Did anyone else understand what I meant the same way as Kusum? Anandama, you understood the same way as Kusum? Yeah? Yes. And yes. So thank you. Thank you so much for putting that in your words. Gives me a chance to clarify. Everything you understood was perfect. Just one point, small point of clarification. We may not be intentionally not telling anyone so that they don't correct us. But by not putting it in our words, we don't give anyone a chance to correct us. So it may not be something we're intentionally doing. It just may, may be that we don't know about the importance of putting things in our own words. And, or it, um, someone posted something on Facebook. I just want to get Facebook up. And we, we may not have these, heard these instructions from Prabhupada about the importance of putting things in our own words. So then we don't. Uh, and that may not be due to any malicious reason. It may just be that we we didn't know about it. So I just want to show you. Um, yes, someone else, not me, someone else posted this letter, an excerpt from a letter from Srila Prabhupada that he wrote in 73. Don't be parrots. Read my books and explain in your own words. That was a letter by Srila Prabhupada. Explain in your own words. So the reason you may not explain your words may not be due to any ill intent. It just may be you're ignorant about the importance of doing that. But the effect is that if you are misunderstanding, no one is going to get a chance to correct it. So it's just a small clarification there. Oh, very nice. Let me just reflect back on that as well. So you further clarified on my understanding that it may not be that if a person is not reflecting back in their own words, there's nothing intentional about it, but it's just that maybe don't understand the importance of doing it in their own words so that other people get a chance to correct them. So there's nothing malicious here, but like you said, but it could be just out of um, not knowing the way to do it. Yes, perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. So now, when we go ahead Can and say mind, something, please do. I just, I just wanted to say that um, you know I joined more than thirty years ago, and I never ever heard anybody saying that I should repeat what I heard with my own words. Me never. neither. I know. So I joined in the first one. Yeah, first but, time I but, hear something like that. <laughs> but you know, it's, it, that's why I was I was um, explained in our law about us that we almost stumbled across these quotes when I was going through the worst dark night of the soul. I mean, everything was going wrong in our lives, and I was praying desperately. If there is a God, if Krishna, you're real, Prabhupada, if you were not just a con man, if you were real, real, help me, you know. And it was almost like we stumbled across those principles. And one of the principles, and once I heard it, I began hearing it all the time. <laughs> Repeat in your own words, explain your own words. Prabhupada says, I don't know if you've looked at the website under the principles, repeat in your own words. It's just like one after another, after another. I just <laughs> kept hearing it. But it was never explained to me. And in fact, we, reading Prabhupada's books was not top of our priority. In fact, it was mm -hmm. not, we, we would only read Prabhupada's books when, on our way to Sankatan in the car or on our way back from collecting in the car. When we were all asleep, we just fall asleep. Mm -hmm. so, but now I understand, you know, if we don't connect with Prabhupada's purpose, if we don't understand that Krishna consciousness is not going to work for us. It won't work. It's a science. It's not a religion. 
you know, sometimes we think Prabhupada is just being clever when he says it's a theistic science. He's not being clever. He's telling us the truth. If we treat it like a religion, we just all go and dress the same. We go into the kirtan, we go use the same language, Jai Prabhu, that we're part of this religion. But it's a science. And the science begins with hearing properly the science. It begins like that. Hearing the knowledge properly, discussing it correctly. Then the science begins to work as we begin to understand it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just wanted to kind of like, you know, get this is the one subject matter. <laughs> I can't stop myself. So please forgive me. If you need to calm me down, <laughs> just calm me down. <laughs> but honestly, it gets me, it gets my blood going because I feel so excited about this one subject okay. matter. So can I carry on speaking or does anyone else want to get a word in edgewise before we carry on? Okay. So the, um, the thing is, when we do put things in our own words, if we're not going to just paraphrase, it's easy to come to deductions. I come to deductions all the time. I think, you know, I'll say, I think what Prabhupada really means is, and then I'll say, I'm going to give you examples of me doing that in our morning class with my husband or our evening class. But if you don't support your deduction with Shastra, either when you're making it during the understanding or later on during the response and say, I've made this understanding. I couldn't find the evidence. Let's look for an evidence now. If you don't support it, there's a likelihood it's a speculation. We, we cannot take something as conclusive truth until it's supported with Shastra. We have to pause and find the Shastra to support our deductions. So deductions are inevitable when we're understanding, but... They can either be unpacking or they could be speculative. i just give you one example. Those of you who've done one, one per port with me. So Prabhupada says that the summary of the Gita is in the Gita Mahatmya. So the summary of the Gita is surrender unto me and I will protect you from all sinful reactions. And in the Gita Mahatmya, Adi Shankar has made a deduction. He has unpacked with his own deduction what he thought Krishna meant by surrender unto me. And he says, what surrender unto me means is read Gita seriously and with all seriousness, seriously and with all sincerity, then Krishna will protect you. And Prabhupada in his one, one per port gives it the go ahead, thumbs up. He says, yes, he has understood properly. That is the right, that is the summary of the Gita. That's what Krishna meant. So that was a deduction. But he's an Acharya, Safra and I thought, if I was to make that deduction, I would have to support it with Shastra. He made a deduction. What Krishna really means by surrender is read Gita seriously and with all sincerity. If you've done that uh, verse with me, hopefully it'll make sense what I've just said. If you've not, you might be a little confused at this point. But uh, everyone okay for me to carry on? Go ahead, Nilachala. Okay. Hare Krishna. So, um, yes, you are explaining about um, our tendency as well to speculate and deduct, and how Srila Prabhupada um, mentions in the purport 1 1 um, that the uh, Sankaracharyas men, um, speaks about. Um, or in his Gita Mahatmya, in the introduction of the Bhagavad Gita, he he makes a deduction and um, kind of explains what he understands um, surrender unto me means in 1866. And that kind of deduction, um, because of Sang Sankaracharya's uh, high position, it is acceptable um doing it in this way but uh for for any one of us if we want to make deductions it's it's best if we can back it up with uh scripture yes yes perfect because we're not seers of the truth yet we can't see the truth we hear the truth we have the support with hearing we hear from those who see so may i carry on is that okay Thank you very much for reflecting back that. 
you understood perfectly, absolutely perfectly. So um, before I go into examples of understandings, I'm going to give you an example that we did in our class, from our class. I'm going to give you an example. First of all, I'm going to give you some examples of general general statements. You'll see when I get there. Then it's like an example from Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavatam class we did. And I'll give you an example from a class I did recently at the manor when someone tried to do their understanding. And I'm going to give an example from a discussion that Luchella recently had with the men. And, and I'm going to ask us, what's happening here? What's happening? I've, I've typed out what's been said. I'm going to ask you, what's happening here? Yeah? Okay. So, but before I get to that, I just want to add a little something. When I enter into a, a Shasha discussion, I feel like a transcendental archaeologist. <laughs> Understandings, responses are my archaeological tools. I don't let go in there, I think, and I, I encourage you to go. It's an adventure. Prabhupada's books are the most wonderful adventure. And if we even trying to enter into that adventure will transform our lives. Just trying to enter into it and become immersed in it. Just that is enough to transform because Krishna is pleased by that activity. Krishna says that in 10.10. He says, 10.9, he says, those who are those who have dedicated their lives to me and always enlivening one another and enlightening one another about me. You know, he says, to those people and deriving great pleasure from what they're enlivening and enlightening, to those people, he says in 1010, I give them the understanding to come to me. Even if we don't understand everything perfectly, it doesn't matter. The fact that we do our very best with sincerity and seriousness will completely transform our lives, completely, for the better. So that's one thing. So I go in as an archaeological, as a transcendental adventurer, archaeologist, and I, I encourage you to go in there not thinking I know it all and just not, blah, blah, but what can I discover? What can I discover? And it's not to say that the things we've already learned we can't use to help us discover more, but go in with the mood of discovery rather than I know it all. Go in with the mood of discovery. What can I discover? So that's one thing. Go in, that's, don't, don't go into the discussion thinking, I know it all, and I'm just going to show up and tell everyone how much I know. No, go in there with, and if, you, if you've got a discussion partner, go there as a collaborative discoverers. Um, the second point I want to make is that Krishna consciousness science is extremely complex and subtle. The very basis of our science is a chinta beta beta tattva inconceivably one and different. That immediately, that, that pervades a lot of our teachings. <laughs> so that immediately is going to make things very subtle. You can't just black and white it. Go in there understanding their subtleties. And I have to grasp the subtleties. And I have to grasp the subtleties of meaning. So, you know, that I may think I know it, but if, I, if I'm too black and white with everything and I don't try to get to the complexity, I'm going to miss things. Um, and something is, the third thing I want to say, if something is even a little iffy, we may say some things like Supreme Personality of Godhead. I understand that's a reference to Krishna. I don't think many of us are going to think, what's your evidence for that? <laughs> you know, it's not that iffy. Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yeah, that's Prophet's way of saying Krishna. But if something is, hmm, I'm not sure, don't just accept it ask for evidence yourself say after you've done your understanding say well that's the best i did to understand it but i'm not sure it's a little iffy it's not it's not like yeah of course <laughs> it's not like saying you know we're not the body well probably saying this body is not me i'm not made of flesh and blood i'm something different that's not iffy but if something if your understanding is even a little iffy don't assume it's correct find evidence that supports it or negates it or something and if you can't find any evidence mark it down as something you've got to talk to other devotees about and it's not conclusive it could be it could not be you're not sure don't act on it yet don't base your life decisions on it yet you know 
Mm. So those were three things I wanted to say before I got into the examples. Is everyone comfortable so far? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Renu. I've just got a little question that... Um, before you ask your question, tell me what you understood that led to the question. Okay, so what I understood from what you're saying about finding the evidence, don't accept things. Um, you know, if you feel a little bit doubtful, don't just dismiss that doubt. Uh, investigate why you're feeling doubtful and find evidence for it. Or against um, it. Or against it. Yeah, because yes. we can't be attached to the result. <laughs> right, right. Um, so I've made a note for myself that um, don't just assume the authenticity of something just because it says so, or somebody has said it, or you've read it, um, if you feel doubtful about it. But finding the evidence for every little bit is very time consuming. Um, and how does one go about finding evidence? Ah, I love that. What a great question. You're saying it takes a lot of time finding evidence. <laughs> and, and even if we're prepared to put the time in, how do we do it? Yeah? Yes. Fantastic. Any thoughts? I always ask the other person if they have any thoughts about it before I give my lights. Do you have any lights to your own question? Um, <laughs> read extensively and ask extensively. If you Wonderful. can find those uh, people that you know are able to help you. Yes, you're saying read the Prabhupada's books a lot and ask other devotees whom you think are a little learned. Ask them, pick their brains. Yeah? Fantastic. I just want to make one comment on your point about if you haven't read it. If you've read it, it could still be iffy. This is a matter of faith, and I'm just stating my faith. Faith is up, you know, we all have faith in something. I have faith that whatever Prabhupada writes or says is absolutely true. So if I read it in his books and it's clear, it's clearly stating something, it's not ambiguous, that's for me true. I don't, for me, because of my history in Iskon, I don't feel like that with everyone else. I feel that, that it's, it's just, just the way life has treated me. I feel that with Prabhupada. If, if I hear all oh, the, the previous acharyas whom Prabhupada has authenticated, why, why do I have faith in Rupa Goswami? Because Prabhupada is, uh, I have faith in Prabhupada. Prabhupada tells me Rupa Goswami is great. Rupa Goswami is great. If I don't know him, but if Prabhupada says so, that's my personal faith. So for me, if Prabhupada says it or a previous acharya says it, that's as good as scripture. That's how it that's how I operate in our discussions. And my husband feels that way too. So if I read in Prabhupada's books or previous Acharya, that's it. Someone else's books? Maybe, maybe not. I'd have to look it up. I'd have to get confirmation from Prabhupada. That's one thing. Regarding how do we find evidence? First of all, be aware you need evidence. Start with that. And... When we first started, I didn't know Prabhupada's books at all. I just had three children. I hadn't been reading for years. I'd stopped going to class after the second child. I was so out of touch with Prabhupada's teachings. My husband just kept putting Prabhupada lectures on. He just, I wasn't even listening to them half the time, but they were always on in the house, just constantly, because he was trying to bring me back from the, from the precipice of faithlessness, you know. And it's incredible. Once you have the question, it's incredible. Just having Prabhupada lectures on so many times. It's just like, I wouldn't be listening to the entire lecture. And then suddenly one sentence would penetrate the dense fog of my brain and connect with me. And it'd be like, oh my God, that was, that was the answer. Mm. You know, I would just have Prabhupada lectures on the whole time you know, or readings of his books the whole time. You know, we have it now on prabhupadvani.org. You can get everything free on vedabase.org.com or whatever. It's all free. Just have it on. Just have either a reading of his books or his lectures on, and you'll, you'll be amazed uh, what suddenly he'll reveal to you. It's like, oh, my God, it's just what we were talking about. And it came up. Uh, that's one thing. If you have a discussion partner, we would take we take five ten minutes where we use database to try to put in some keywords and see if we can find an evidence, you know, 
but rather than talking for half an hour, just talking speculation, we'll stop the discussion and sometimes do some research there together collaboratively, thinking of key words we could use on database. Uh, third is, as you said, reach out to devotees whom you think may know. Um, you know, I, I often will reach out to Kartik Chandra Prabhu, I reach out to Govinda Prabhu. Uh, they don't always answer, but I reach out. There's another devotee in America, a lady who's very, who reads a lot and is very happy to reciprocate. I reach out to her. So I have a little WhatsApp thing called Shastric Help. And those three devotees are on my little Shastric Help. And I just, as we're going through, I just, we were just discussing this point and we can't find it. I'm sure we've read it. We can't find the evidence. We've done our search. Can you help us? Sometimes they don't answer, but sometimes they do. Um, I myself, I'm really happy to engage like that with devotees. I used to do it on WhatsApp and Facebook. Now I'm trying to get people to use the pro board. So now I will only answer if people approach me through the pro board. Um, if you reach out to me any other way I'll say please put your question on the pro board <laughs> and I will answer <laughs> because I want to use the pro board to create a community of devotees who are, who are doing machita matgata prana together we're doing sorry we're all using this of this these principles because on Facebook other people come in and they're just they're talking out they have a kind of like a debate mentality, which is not Harikata. Harikata doesn't have this like, no, I'm right, you're wrong, you know, you're just demon. It's not how we do Harikata, it's ridiculous. Harikata should be very sweet, very pleasant, very respectful. And so I, now I'll do it on uh, the pro board. And I encourage you, please register with the pro board. I encourage people whom you think are interested to, to join the, our um, our little community of devotees are trying to do Saru Sangha, hearing and discussing, using these wonderful principles, all based on Prabhupada's teachings. So we can use the pro board like that too. Maybe other devotees will jump in and share their insights. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Thank you. Right, thank you. So well, let's talk about some classic, what you call it, um, um, deductions which the people thought were right, but our acharyas say are wrong. A classic one is Daridra Narayan. God is everything. Vasudeva Sarvamiti, Samahatma Sudurlava, 719. The Supreme Lord is everything. Well, that means he must be the poor man. He's also the poor man. So when you see the poor man, see God. Don't see a poor man and kick him. See God and Give him charity or serve him or invite him into your home. After all, we see a titi Narayan, the guest is Narayan. So the poor man must be Narayan too. It's a logical deduction. Is it right? No, Prabhupada condemns it. He condemns it as to, he used to make him so angry, this deduction. So angry because it's a misunderstanding. Yes, God God is the cause or is his energies. There's God, the personal feature, and God, his energies, his impersonal feature. You cannot equate a poor man to God, the person. But again, here comes the subtleties. It is and it isn't. He's, he's God's energies, which are non different from him. But so is the rich man. <laughs> Everyone is. So there's a, someone could do an understanding, Daridra Narayan, God is everything, therefore this poor man is Narayan, let me also worship the poor man. Is it a correct deduction? No, it's a speculation which was very disapproved of. Very, very disapproved of. You look it up on database, anytime the word Daridra Narayan comes in, Prabhupada is smashing it, smashing it. Let's think of a, okay, some some deductions that get my blood boiling. I couldn't think of any others that got Prabhupada's blood boiling, but I know one that gets my blood boiling too. <laughs> and I will tell them to you now. Um, Prabhupada uses the word living Bhagavat a lot in his books. So here you have a quote from 1-1, one, one, a lecture Prabhupada gave on 1-1, one, one, uh, Bhagavatam 1, Canto 1, Chapter 1, Text 1-2. to two. So It's a lecture Prabhupada gives. 
One Bhagavat is this book Bhagavat, another Bhagavat, the person Bhagavat, who lives in the book Bhagavat. He is person Bhagavat. Two kinds of Bhagavats. We have to learn Bhagavatam from the living Bhagavat. He uses this phrase, it comes up, if you do a search for it on Vedabase, living Bhagavat, it comes up quite a lot. Deduction. The Rodis are understanding. They do a deduction. They try to put it in their own words, but they don't check with evidence. The deduction turns from living Bhagavat to living Guru. A Guru who is alive. And they think the two things mean the same. So from this, we have developed in our ISKCON huge worldwide community, some devotees who think that hearing from Prabhupada is ineffective because he's not living anymore. And they, as their gurus die, they jump from one guru to another, trying to find the living one. But you have to hear from the lips of a living guru, someone who's alive, not from a dead guru. That's not effective. He's got to be still alive for it to work. But is that the necessarily the right understanding? I don't think so. Not when I really carefully study what Prabhupada is saying. Prabhupada contrasts a living guru with a professional reader in that quote from 112. He says, if you want to study Bhagavad, you must go to a living Bhagavad, not to the professional reader. So he doesn't contrast a living Bhagavad with a dead Bhagavad. He contrasts a living Bhagavad with a professional reader. And in a previous quote, 2.3.23, he says, someone he is, um, who lives on the book Bhagavad, that is a living Bhagavad is someone who lives on the book. That means he evinces the teachings of the book Bhagavad in his character and in his life, and in his dealings, he exemplifies the teachings of the book Bhagavad. That's the living Bhagavad, not a professional reader who just gives Bhagavatam classes to get name, fame, adoration, distinction, dakshin. It's someone whose very character and life embodies the principles of the Bhagavad. That's the living Bhagavad. And that's to, to say, oh, it's a living guru, someone who's alive, not dead. That the person thought they were doing an understanding, but because they didn't research for evidences to either collaborate or to see to see if there is a it's a terrible, in my view, it's a terrible misunderstanding. It's a speculation. And it's a kind of speculation that has I know several devotees who won't study Prabhupada's books. They think there's no use. I will only go and listen to a living, a living guru. Go ahead, Nilchana. Hare Krishna. So I think just catching the start, I don't know if I, I'm going to say the right words, but um, you are, you, you kind of, you're giving some examples and the first ex or of deductions in, in scripture, like misunderstanding. Um, and one of the first ones is something that really boils your blood. Um, is that um, when they, yeah, when Prabhupada speaks of the book Bhagavat and the person Bhagavat, or the living Bhagavat, the living Bhagavat uh, doesn't mean, or what they interpret is that the, the Guru Bhagavat, or the, the, the Guru should be a living Guru. The living they guru, the living guru. They call living guru. The living guru. He uh, never uses that word, Prabhupada, ever. Yeah, Go ahead. I've never heard, heard it, yeah. So the living guru, they they interpret this as the living Bhagavad, as the living guru. And in this way, they are kind of dismissing the previous, the uh, or the, the acharyas or gurus who have, who have uh, left this world. So now they jump from guru to guru, um, finding one who is alive, um, who is kind of, in a sense, just, you could say, professionally reciting. It's a little they bit may a, not be professional yeah, yeah. reciting, but, yeah. but Prabhupada is contrasting living Bhagavad with the Prabhupada. These people may be perfectly authentic, but what it makes them do, Nilachana, it makes them stop studying Prabhupada's books. 
and they're just trying, they, they may be finding the people they're listening from may be authentic, not, yeah. but then I don't think they're understanding Prabhupada's words. Yeah. I personally think we are short selling ourselves when we stop associating with Prabhupada. Even if someone is authentic, to find someone of Prabhupada's caliber is rare. Prabhupada is so rare. And to stop hearing from him, and because of this mis this speculation, we are really short selling ourselves. It's really short selling. Sorry, I interrupted there. I just no, no, no. That, I just wanted to clarify. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. Um, accusing that's, everyone yeah, of being yeah, yeah. a professional. No, no. That's that's also that was not my intention to yeah. to structure it like that. Um, I just kind of jumped the gun a little bit and used the two examples in one thing. But um, what, you, what you're actually saying is that um, Prabhupada's value of being a living Bhagavad is the most important thing, is because he is exemplifying or embodying the teachings of the, Bhag the, yes. of the message of the yes. Bhagavatam. Yes. And that is who we need to uh, learn from. Yes. It doesn't matter if they've left the world. There's the quote um, that a Vaishnava never dies. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh -huh. yeah, I, don't, I don't, can't remember exactly. Back to the no tackles. He who reason, yeah. he who, who said, he who says a Vaishnava dies, he, he, he reasons ill. ill who yeah. says a Vaishnava dies. A Vaishnava never dies. He dies to live, and living spreads the living holy name around, or something. Like that. Yeah, he lives in sound. He lives um, in sound. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's 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 the point. Thank you, thank you so much for being. Yes, another way. I just would like to add one thing that this speculation, exactly this, what you are saying now, it almost becomes a widely accepted truth proclaimed as it is and because we don't check it and we don't look behind it we just accept it as a yes. as a fact yes that's that's quite dangerous and then our society is becoming if you like pockmarked with all these speculative truths yeah. that we take for granted and yeah. no one is checking yeah. we just assume we just assume because we don't have the habit of checking with uh -huh. shastra supporting our understanding was that a genuine understanding or was that a speculation mm -hmm. and we can do speculations in good faith the path mm -hmm. to hell is paved with good intentions we mm -hmm. have to check <laughs> yes mm -hmm. thank you thank you for reading that up. okay i'm going to give you one other um widely held speculation which again makes my personal blood boil um and I'm going to tell you where I think it comes from. Someone explained this to me, um, where it came from, because I was so bewildered why, why this is going around. And then we'll go and get onto some examples. So I don't want to go beyond our time. So hopefully at four, I don't know what, okay. So um, this is another one. So apparently Radhana Swami quoted from Prabhupada. I'm just going to quote from Prabhupada. But someone explained to me, Jandu, who is his disciple, explained to me, this is what Radhana Swami had said, which, because I thought, I couldn't, I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't understand it. How could he have said fake it till you make it? I just don't understand it. You know, that's a, a speculation that really makes my blood boil. But I was so bewildered. How is it coming from Maharaj, you know? So then she explained to me what Maharaj actually said. He said something, the way she told me, which sounds very much like this. And this is a quote from Prabhupada. Okay? This is a quote from Prabhupada, Initiation Lecture 69. So those, so those who have fortunately come to this platform of Krishna consciousness by association, by practice, this is the way. So stick to it. Don't go away. Even if you find some fault, don't go away from the association. Struggle and Krishna will help you. So Maharaj apparently has said something very similar. Even if you're struggling in your practice, keep practicing, keep practicing, and eventually you'll make it. Okay. Now, someone repeated Maharaj in their own words, but it was a deduction. And that deduction has stuck like glue, and I hear it in so many classes, which infuriates me. You know, I think, why are we setting devotees up for failure? Why are we training them to crash? 
So this is the, the, the um, speculative version of that statement that is very popularly making the rounds. Fake it till you make it. There's nothing in our scripture that says fake it to you. In fact, several statements that says, whatever you do, don't fake it. Bhagavad Gita 3.6, don't be a pretender. If you look up the dictionary meaning of the word fake, it means deception, pretense. And that's the first thing Krishna tells Arjun. Uh, Arjun, before I tell you anything else, let me just tell you the one do not. The one and only do not is don't be a pretender. Be authentic. Uh, if you don't get that one right, the rest of the instructions are all going to not be of any value. The first instruction Krishna tells him, three, six, one of the first, don't be a pretender. And then other instructions, don't imitate, follow, but don't imitate. So I can't do what, let's say, Radhana Swami does. It would be imitation for me. I couldn't do what he does. I, if I tried, I would be an imitator and would become counterproductive for me. Because, you know, so don't try to imitate someone else. Do what's appropriate for you, but practice your practice. Our sadhana is our sadhana. Don't try to imitate someone who has the adhikara of a sannyasi. If you don't have the adhikara of sannyasi, then you'll become a fake sannyasi who's watching pornography or sleeping with his disciples or some other outlandish thing, you know, don't fake, don't fake it. And yet this is now one of the um, deductions from practice, even if it's a struggle, keep practicing, one day you'll make it. We put it in our own words as fake it to me, but that is not supported by scripture. And if we've taken the time and trouble to look through scripture to see if there's anything that supports the idea of deception or pretense. We realize there's nothing to support it. There's plenty to caution against it. So now I've got that off my chest. <laughs> I try to become more human after this. That was probably the most, most fiery you're gonna see me for today. I hope I haven't put you all off. Go ahead, Kristen. Um this it's a question on what you just said fake it till you make tell, it tell me what i just said before you ask the question yeah so um you, you giving a speculative version of what Prabhupada said and what uh Radhanath Maharaj has said that um you don't come to krishna you've come to krishna consciousness stick to it you have struggles, stick to it, and you will succeed in the end. That is the message. But over a period of time, people have made their own sort of understanding. And it's one of the speculative understanding is <clears throat> fake it till you make it. <clears throat> I'll be honest with you. I have heard this as well in a couple of the classes. And... Um, um, now, this is my understanding, and I'm just asking for clarification, is when I started my journey in Krishna consciousness, this is in the very beginning, and I was struggling to chant, and I remember telling um, uh, this devotee that I find that I am not able to concentrate in my chanting, so I think I will, instead of doing 16 rounds, if I'm doing four rounds where I'm concentrating is much better rather than me doing 16 rounds where my mind is not in it. And um, then I was told, don't worry, you just do it. You do your 16 rounds. Don't worry about the quality of the rounds, it will come. But now so many years down the line, if that devotee had not given me this instruction, I wouldn't be here today. So even though I was not I was doing the rounds. Okay, I'm told to do it, do it. Even though I was not getting the nectar round of it. And I was, it was, sort of feels like I was faking it. But this is how I'm telling my example. But after so many years now, now I'm able to do my rounds. Now I'm able to, I understand the importance. I do relish it and I do them properly. So a lot how of people, do we relate this? I'm going, to, I'm going to answer you quite briefly rather than ask reflecting back. A lot of people have said to me something similar to what you mean. 
which is what is meant by fake it till you make it is keep practicing till you make it. Yes. My answer to that is say that, practice till you make it. Because though you may have understood it as practice till you make it, other people have understood deception. Like I'm not really a brahmachari or I'm not really a sannyasi. I'm watching pornography or I may even be visiting prostitutes, but I'm going to carry on dressing and acting like a brahmachari or a sannyasi and the hope that I will be one day. That also goes on. That is fake it. The word fake ha could, as many people like you have interpreted it to mean practice, carry on practicing, even if you're not feeling. Then use the word practice. Practice is there in our sense. So that's what sadhana means. Sadhana means, especially at the stage of vaidhi bhakti, you have no taste, just keep practicing, keep practicing. That's why I do sadhana. You have no taste, but keep practicing. This is given, this practice, you know, do a morning program every day, do your Gita discussion, do your Bhagavatam discussion, chant the 16 rounds. It's hard, it's dry, it's like grinding stones. Just keep doing it. One day won't be grinding stones, it'll be wonderful. Fake it has another connotation, which is deception. Or you're not really a Brahmin, you're more given to handwork, but pretend to be a Brahmin when you're not and start doing Vedic sacrifices. And in the meantime, you're beating up your wife. That's not Brahmin. You're just doing that because you want to, an easy way of making a living. No, we have to, there's a whole section, we just did Canto 7, it'll be out in a month or so. There's a whole section of uh, Yudhisthira and uh, Narada Muni instructing King Yudhisthira in the, uh, in the, I think, 15th chapter of Canto 7 about um, human society, Varnashram. And he talks about the different kinds of upadharmas, chana dharma, par paradharma. When we, when we, one of them, I forget which is the technical name, but one of the kinds of perverted religion is when we do the religious practices of someone which is inappropriate for us. So for example, if a, if a, a married man, it's appropriate for him to speak to his wife and be kind to her. If he tries to act like a sannyasi and do the uh, activities of a sannyasi, it's not appropriate for him to speak to women. He's doing chaladharma, it's not appropriate. He's gonna ruin his marriage. He has to show some kindness to his wife and, and, and instruct them. If a sannyasi tries to do the, the dharma of a married man and, and um, you know, counsel women, it's wrong dharma for you, mate. <laughs> and if your nature, if you put yourself in an ashram or a nirvana, which is not according to your nature, that's also perverted religion. You have to act according to what is natural to your religion. It's a science. It's a science. It's about understanding what's appropriate. So chanting Hare Krishna, 16 rounds, that's appropriate for every vana and every ashram. Prabhupada has given it to us as a basic sadhana. That's a practice. That's not faking it. That's a practice. Thank you. Faking Thank it you. brings it another connotation, which is very dangerous. Go ahead, Rin. I really like this clarification you've given because I too have heard fake it till you make it and it sat very uneasily with me because I don't like the deception. I, I am, you know, I am who I am, sort of, you know, struggling, yes, but... So, so I'm so happy to hear this from you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And it can go through many areas of our lives. You know, if we're not fasting on a kadashi, if we just have to eat, you know, if we're just keeping the bed, don't pretend you're doing nirja. Just, just be honest. Even if being honest means you eat a little humble pie. That humble pie is good for us. You know, so I'm going to carry on now. I'm going to give you a couple of more, less, less, um, what do you call it, uh, fiery examples, let's say. So this is an example from our home Bhagavad Gita discussion that we just had the other day. It really excited me. So go to Bhagavad Gita 3, can, chapter 3, text 37. I'm just trying to see where it was. 
I think it's the last sentence of the first paragraph we were discussing. Haribo, Sami. Hey, come on in. Welcome. Can you hear us? Hare Krishna. Hare yes, Krishna. I can hear you. Um, I'm sorry, I keep my video off because uh, somebody told me that might be a problem. No problem, uh, no problem. That's why I couldn't come in earlier. Sorry. No, no, welcome. We're happy to have you here. So Bhagavad Gita 3. 37 is the last sentence of the purport. So we didn't, I, I didn't un understand it. So let's read the sentence aloud. Who's got the book? Oh, who's got the, go ahead, read that. If they're, if they're for, read, if you read that, no, Charlie, go ahead. Is that, sorry, is it this? If they're for. Okay. If they're for. It's oh. the last sentence of the first paragraph. Oh, here we go. If, therefore, the mode of passion, instead of being degraded into the mode of ignorance, is elevated to the mode of goodness by the prescribed method of living and acting, then one can be saved from the degradation of wrath by spiritual attachment. Thank you. So, in understanding, I first picked up the phrase, the prescribed method of living. And I deduced my, I understand, this is what I understand, but it's a deduction because it's not the, it's not the exact meaning of the words. I understand what Prabhupada meant, means by the prescribed method of living acting is to hear about, glorify, remember, pray to, worship, and serve Krishna. To daily do this. This is the prescription, the, the, um, the instruction given to us how to lead our lives daily, hear about, glorify, remember, worship, and serve Krishna. So I happen to know of evidences straight away. So I gave my evidences as part of my understanding. And my, my evidences were um, Canto 1, Chapter 2, Text 14, the verse. You can go to that and have a look. You've got beta base. 1, 2, 14, the verse. And Canto 2, Chapter 1, Text 5, the verse. So both of them, kind of like in a in a nutshell, give the prescription of how we as Vaishnavas should live. So, 1, 2, 14, has anyone got the English? They want to read it aloud? Yeah. Therefore, with one pointed attention, one should constantly hear about, glorify, remember, and worship the personality of Godhead, who is the protector of the devotees. Thank you. So that was one of my evidences. This is the prescription. This is the instruction given to us how we should conduct our lives. Who, who's got 215 open? 215. There we go. 215. I've got it here. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, oh, descendant of King Bharat, one who desires to be free from all miseries must hear about, glorify, and also remember the personality of Godhead who is the super soul, the controller, and the savior from all misery. Yes, so again, must hear about. This is the prescription. This is the order given to us. So that's, the, because I happen to know those two verses, I was able to give the verses as part of my understanding. Now, what if I, I, I knew of the verses, I just couldn't remember the verse numbers? Then in the, one of the first responses I would have made is, I think oh. my understanding was right, but I can't remember the evidence. Can we find the evidence? I would still need to find the evidence. I was able to supply the evidence as part of my understanding, but if I wasn't, it's something I must do then doing the response because the response we stop and we start looking, collaborating. Does that make sure? So either I provide it when I'm doing my understanding or if I couldn't provide it during my understanding, then it must come up in the response. I must provide evidence. I can't just make a deduction like that without evidence. So that was my understanding of the prescribed method of living and acting. The daily we hear about, glorify, remember, and worship Krishna, serve Krishna. Then um, the rest of the sentence says, um, therefore, the mode of passion, instead of being degraded into the mode of ignorance, is elevated to the mode of... So the mode of passion, I unpack that. I understand the mode of passion is the law's external energy, which impels us to act for our own sense gratification. Immediately, I, I didn't know the evidence. I knew there was evidence in, uh, in chapter 18. 
I just couldn't remember. So in my understanding, I said, I can't remember the evidence, but I, I think there's evidence since chapter 18. So I'm going to stick with that as an understanding. Then when we did the response, I said, okay, let's find the evidence now. Response is when we start asking questions to clarify our understanding. Because when we do a response, we start kind of highlight and clarifying and fine tuning our understanding. So in the response, I didn't stop in the understanding to look for the evidence, but in the response, we stopped and we started looking for evidence because I couldn't remember the verse. But there's a verse, chapter 18, text 24. So then I carried on my understanding. Influenced by this mode, the performer lacks proper discrimination. What was I understanding? If therefore the mode of passion, instead of being degraded into the mode of ignorance, is elevated to the mode of goodness, um, by the prescribed method of living and acting, then what can be saved from the degradation of Ra by a spiritual attachment? So because of the words degraded, degradation, I impact that to me, we lack proper discrimination, we make wrong choices, and we jump out of the frying pan into the fire. We make our life situation and our destinies worse. So that's how I understood it, because of lack of discrimination. In the mode of passion, we lack good discrimination. That was my understanding, and I supported it when we came to response. I couldn't remember the evidence. I knew there was evidence. I just couldn't remember it. So in the response, we looked for evidence, 1831. Uh, Bhagavad Gita, 1831. Then I carried on with my understanding. Material desires are always frustrated and therefore end up in anger, which is in the mode of um, ignorance. So that was my, instead of being degraded into the mode of ignorance, I understood that, that what I understood proper meant is that when your material desires are frustrated, you end up angry. So I, I was putting it in my own words. What is said in my mind, why, why, does, uh, mode of, why does mode of passion degrade into the mode of ignorance? I made a deduction because you're frustrated. You have desires which are frustrated. So that's a deduction. I have to support it. Is my deduction correct? So I immediately look, we looked for evidence during the response. Uh, and my evidence was um, 1825. Under the influence of the motor vehicle, we commit. Uh, anyway, I, I can't remember where I put the evidence, but we did find evidence. Uh, I think it was in the verse we were talking about in three, in 337, it says, um, it says something to that effect. It says that um, mode of passion. Anyway, I did find evidence that says when your mature desires are frustrated, you become angry. I did find I did find evidence to support that. Isn't it early in the Bhagavad Gita as well? It may be. I'm I'm not going to find all the evidence there, but I did. We did look it up. I may not have put it in my notes for you, but we looked up. We actually found. Direct statement: When your mature desires are frustrated, you become angry. Probably. Then, um, and then we, then we, I understood the whole sentence. That sentence that from from three thirty seven to mean that even if we have mature desires, we're in the mode of passion. Mode of passion means you have mature desires. If we daily hear about, discuss, chant, remember Krishna's teachings, pray to Krishna, worship the devotee, worship the deities and try to dedicate our activities to him. But even if we have mature desires, by these activities, our intelligence will become purified to the mode of goodness. And instead of when things go wrong, we get frustrated, becoming angry, those activities will begin to purify our intelligence to the mode of goodness when we'll act dutifully without attachment. By evidence for Mode of goodness, that mode of goodness means you act dutifully without detach, without attachment to the result, was 1823. So that was a very complex sentence, and every stage we were having to deduce. It wasn't just a matter of finding a synonym for the words, it was a matter of really unpacking what was meant by the words. We couldn't just insert synonyms, you know, but we had to deduce what he meant and constantly supporting it with evidence. So then we were left with this that. We have material desires, that's okay. If we don't hear about growth, I remember Krishna. When our material desires are thwarted, we will feel annoyed, we'll feel irritated or angry, and then we'll act in a way which will harm others and harm ourselves. 
But if despite having material desires, we daily do the sadhana that Prabhupada has given us, then Krishna will purify our intelligence. So when, when we're frustrated, instead of becoming angry, we'll get the intelligence to act dutifully and become elevated rather than degraded. So that's how we understood that sentence by putting things in our own words and constantly, constantly supporting it with evidence. Does that make sense? Did they then want to understand how, how, we, what, what, how we do it in, in our class? This is being recorded. So if that was a bit fast, you can always re-listen as well. I want to also now show you other examples because whenever I give class, um, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. In responses, if we didn't know the evidence, I just have a bit more notes on on my past. If in our response, if we didn't have if we didn't have the evidence during our understanding, if that's what we understood, but we didn't have the evidence, then in our responses we would have asked questions like, "Is it true material desires um, are always frustrated? Because mode of passion always degrades the mode of ignorance, which means they're always. Is that true?" Then we look for evidence and I find an amazing evidence. Your desires must be frustrated because you desire something that's not permanent. It must be frustrated, but your desires are always frustrated. <laughs> Even if they're initially satisfied, but in the long run, they'll be frustrated. Is it true that we become angry when our material desires are frustrated? We would have asked these questions to co collaborate and confirm whether our initial understanding had been right. And we would look for evidence. And here was the evidence I was looking for, the nature of instruction one. But when the materialists cannot fulfill their plans and when the devices are frustrated, they become angry. Frustration of material desires produces anger. Um, yeah, so it goes on like that. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, the other day I gave a very, very short class on uh, the manner, the Bhagavatam class on Canto 2, chapter 5, text 14. And the first sentence of this, of the purport, um, I, because I, I always get the audience, what do you understand Prabhupada to say? What do you understand him to say? So this was one of the devotees. I just, I, I got the recording of the class and I just typed out what he said. Now I want you to tell, let's get, get up to 514. So you've got the original sentence in front of you. And then I'm going to read you what he said. And you can tell me, is this... A paraphrase, speculation, combination of both, or an understanding. But let's get up the sentence. First. Sorry, which, which verse? Canto 2, chapter 5, text 14. Is it the first sentence from the purport? Yes, would you like to read it aloud? Sure. Yeah. The phenomenal world is impersonally the representation of Vasudeva because the ingredients of its creation, the interaction and the enjoyer of the resultant action, the living being are all produced by the external and internal energies of Lord Krishna. Okay, so what should we do first? Shall I tell you what the Stavodi said first? And he's never been trained, so I'm not having a go at him. But whenever we give class, we get the devotees to do this. And I realize the devotees are not understanding. They always end up speculating. Which you can make, it makes me realize how much we're speculating when we're reading alone. <laughs> you know, so this is what he said. Um, this phenomenal world, and I want you to tell me what you hear here. Do you hear understandings, paraphrasing, or comments? And even if we don't, and how many of those comments are can be supported by scripture and how many of those comments are just speculations because a deduction is a form of comment this phenomenal world is an impersonal representation of vasudev is that an understanding a paraphrase uh, or a comment paraphrase looks like a paraphrase yeah practically just repeated the same thing yeah. Okay, so it doesn't tell us, and he, he doesn't even know if he's understood it, because he's just said the same words. Okay, let's carry on. Phenomenal world means the world of earth, water, fire, air, and sky. Is that a paraphrase, a speculation, or a comment? Comment. It's a comment? Everyone agree with Nilashema? Yes. 
Anyone, everyone else? You think, okay. Uh, I think it's a, I think he's doing an understanding because he's telling us what phenomenal world means. Of course, you could say, um, well, his understanding is wrong, but, but he could, but then he'd have to support it with Shastra. But I think he's trying to do an understanding. He's telling us a phenomenal world means a world that is perceivable through the senses. So it's made of earth, water, fire, air, sky. So I would have put that, that the one thing he said, which I thought, good job, good job. Understanding, understanding, yes. Uh, so I thought that was an understanding. It is made of the external energy, which is the impersonal representation. What's that? Paraphrase. Okay, it's paraphrase. It could be, it could be. Anyone else? Because he used the word impersonal representation, so that part was paraphrase. But the but, external energy is is the understanding. I thought I thought he was when he said that, oh my god, he's actually gonna get it. I thought he's understanding that the phenomenal world because he says, are all produced by the external energies, external and internal energies. Anyway, I thought he's beginning to try to understand. He's saying that um, the external energy of the Lord is his impersonal representation. So I thought it was a mixture of understanding and paraphrase, because he didn't unpack impersonal representation. But at least he, he began trying to put two and two together. Now listen to this part. So I understand that means it is a temporary manifestation. That's okay. What's that? Uh, That's a comment. It's a comment because there's, there's nowhere there. I mean, I don't know what he was understanding. It says in there that it's a temporary manifestation because there's nothing. It's, it may be a true comment, but a comment is a comment. <laughs> it's not putting the meaning. He's now making a deduction. Oh, because it's the external energy, it must be temporary. Yeah, that's true, but it's not what the sentence is saying. I thought it was a comment too. But, now, listen, but this temporary representation should be respected because it is representation of Vasudev. So, where is, so it is like a deity. It is like a deity. So, is that what the sentence is saying? No. That you have to respect the mature manifestation like the deity? It's, just, it's like the deity of Krishna? No. So what? Yeah, and Sami, what did you say? I didn't hear you. No, it's it's not saying in in this sentence. It's so that's his comment. Yeah, he's going on to add things. Yes, it's okay to add things, but not in your understanding. We start by straight understanding. What just what I understand, it, and our understanding may require yes. some deduction. That's okay as long as we support our deductions, but which trying to deduce what's meant in the sentence we're understanding without adding to the meaning and without subtracting from the meaning. Then when we come to our responses, and we'll talk about responses in another seminar, we can add our insights and this and that. But in an understanding, we just repeat in our own words what we understand Prabhupada is saying. And there's nowhere there that Prabhupada is saying you have to respect the mature energy and worship the mature energy like the deity. Of Krishna on the altar. Go ahead. Thank you, um, Prabhu. So uh, just to reflect back what you're saying, you're saying that you can add comments, you know, there's a place for them, um, but just not when you're understanding the sentence, you know, the, the place to add comments is in the insights bit of the responses. Okay. And um, yes, and, and then you were giving the example of the Prabhu in class who added some comments and and this particular Prabhu, I, I, I know I'm laughing, but I'm not laughing at him. He's never been trained and he was participating in the class and he was really doing his best. And a lot of, some of the things he said, I thought, oh, he's got it without any training. So I'm not laughing at him. I'm just, sure. I just find it's just more, I get excited about this subject, but you understood so, me perfectly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do have a question. Um, Please do. Well. Um, <laughs> I do have a doubt because when we're discussing in a group, it makes perfect sense to me that you wouldn't add comments and you do your understanding and you'd support it with evidence from Shastra. 
When you're doing a class, however, that's where my doubt comes in. Because um, I'm, I'm really playing devil's advocate here. Good. But, um, I, I, was, I was looking at Brebel Bud's um, email. I get Brebel Bud Barney emails every day. Wonderful. And um, he was um, talking on Bhagavad Gita 419. And I'll just read out the verse for context. One is understood to be in full knowledge whose every act is devoid of desire for sense gratification. He is said by sages to be a worker whose fruit of action is burned up by the fire of perfect knowledge. So Prabhupada begins the lecture by talking about, um, you know, kind of how in India, the Varna Ashram system is respected and they are given names. So a Brahmana is called Banditji, Vaishya's honorable title is Setji, uh, a, a Kshatriya is called um, uh, Thakur, uh, Thakur Sahib, and uh, a Sudra is called Chaudhary. Um, so, you know, he's given all these names for, you know, all these people who are in the Varna Ashram system saying it's honor honorable. So I'm thinking, I know he's our Acharya, but he wasn't, he doesn't go on to explain the verse until, you know, later on. So he's adding comments. Yes, yes, and yes. that's what I've seen, um, you know, kind of quite high level um, people in our movement, gurus, uh, sadhus, that's how they do their classes is, you know, they will obviously explain the verse, but they will add their own um, understanding or they'll bring in different bits rather than stick to um, the understanding of Prabhupada's meaning. So in when it comes to class, I always struggle with how you can not comment, um, especially as, you know, uh, sort of the, the ladies have asked me to give a Gita class in the evening sometimes, and I'm just trying to integrate everything I've learned here into sort of how I give class. Thank you. You say in a discussion, you can see how it's possible not to comment, but to ask for evidences and to do reflections. But Prabhupada comments a lot and just give us a class, you read from a class where Prabhupada's commenting. And that's what other devotees do, especially senior devotees do. And that's how we give class. We do our commentary. Can I understand you correctly? Yes, perfectly. Thank you. Okay, I know many devotees are going to disagree with me on this. Maybe some of you will, maybe some of you won't, but I know that many devotees really like commenting. I personally hate it. Um, I don't hate it when Prabhupada does it because I accept Prabhupada as a self-realized acharya. His whatever he speaks is as good as Shastra as far as I'm concerned. And that's just a matter of my faith. If someone didn't have that faith in Prabhupada, they may not feel the way I feel. That's how I feel about Prabhupada. That's why I'm in Iskon. I'm in Iskon only because of Prabhupada because this is his movement, and I want to see it succeed. I want to see his mission succeed. I want to see him glorified. Um, I want to see, yeah, he, he, he just worked so hard to deliver conditioned souls. I want his mission to succeed, and I owe him so much. So my faith is whatever Prabhupada says is as good as Shastra. That's a matter of faith. And other people have that matter of faith in their initiating or shiksha gurus. Because of my life experiences, unfortunately, though I wouldn't say to anyone else, oh, why do you have that kind of faith in your guru? I don't have it for anyone else. So anyone else, I find the classes hard if they comment because they're assuming I have a level of faith that I don't have, that I have in Prabhupada, but not in them. Them, everyone else, I prefer to see evidence because of my life experiences, because I've seen people in very high positions get things terribly wrong and mislead devotees. And now I'm like, you can't, you can't rest on your rank with me. I want to see the evidence from scripture. So that's just me. And I'm not saying that's, you know, I, I understand just like I have faith in Prabhupada, where each, the Lord is guiding each of us in our hearts. Faith is a very personal thing. The way I give class, I realize I'm not an acharya. I cannot comment without the possibility of misleading someone. And I, I feel that my commentary 
is going to waste the person's life for that 45 minutes they're sitting there listening to my commentary. I know some devotees love it and they argue with me and my husband tooth and nail. No, it's wonderful. We have so many realizations. We want to share it. And I'm thinking, huh? I don't know. I'm, I'm, sometimes I listen to your class and I'm thinking, that was speculation. That was speculation. Where's your evidence? You know. So for myself, I don't like to do it. And I've asked your husband, your very good husband, to please put up some of my classes. And that's how I give the Gita class. That's how I give the Bhagavatam class. I don't give a lot of classes, but when I do, I always give it according to the Amos method. It is always supported by Shastra. Every single thing I say is what is proper saying. Is it supported with Shastra? Where is the Shastra? Because I think that is the only way that the people in that class, I can feel 100% certain that they will get some benefit if I help them to hear Prabhupada. And everything is evidence-based on Prabhupada. Then I can feel I didn't waste their time and I didn't mislead them. That's my thing. And that's the way I like to do it. So please have a look at some of the classes I tried to give um, and see if, if I can, if you like that way, then I'm happy to support you in giving your classes in that way. I personally would love to see more and more devotees giving evidence-based classes. You know, that's one reason I just do my own classes at home. I get so much of our classes discussions at home because everything is like a science. It's like we really go through proper purpose, like scientifically. Everything is evidence-based. We don't come to any ahas unless it's evidence-based. We don't come to any action plans unless it's evidence-based. But if I'm coming to, if I'm going to mold my life on someone's speculation, I know from experience that that is very risky business. You know, I'm sorry I've had the experiences I've had. And I'm sorry if I, it's not my desire to hurt anyone's faith, because if you have faith, it's wonderful. I just would like to see everyone in this one support what they say with evidence from this, from the our founder Acharya. That's my personal. Mm. I, so I just to see if Adi Ganga um, is okay with that. Yes, um, thank you Prabhu. You've explained it so nicely and you've explained it using your past experiences, how you have faith in Prabhupada's words, but not necessarily, you know, kind of anyone else's um, words unless they've supported it with evidence and you try not to do that in your classes so as not to mislead anyone. So in those 45 minutes you can mislead um, other people unless you actually have evidence-based Shastra in your classes. And that's how you get the insights and the aha moments. And so that's how you try to do it. So that makes perfect sense to me. Thank you for explaining that. Thank you so much, Eddie. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Renu. I was just going to make a comment on what you've just said and the question. And um, it's but just basically that this is what impressed me and my husband when we first started coming to the classes, how evidence-based it was, that everything they said, we must have been listening to good speakers, but everything that we heard it was uh, linked back to a verse or a quote from a verse or bro what Prabhupada has said. So it was very impressive. Yes, um, wonderful. You're saying your experience, you must have been listening to particularly good class givers for always evidence-based. And that impressed you. You thought, well, these people aren't just talking out of the back of their mouth. <laughs> they know the scripture. <laughs> yes, yes, wonderful, wonderful. So I am now... Uh, can, I, can I ask something? Sure. Tell me what you understood that you're asking to. What what led to your question? Sami? What what led my question? What did you understand that made you give that gave rise to the question you're gonna ask? First I me what you understood. that you think whatever we say should be evidence-based. Yes. Thank you. Um so I it, Mm. Is it's the understanding? Uh, should it also be evidence based? Because uh, I don't know my how understanding much, I, is my understanding. I don't know how much of you missed at the very beginning, but I gave a couple of examples of how our understanding sometimes involve deductions. Did you hear that part of the class? No. Okay, so listen to the uh, video because uh, Adi Ganga Prabhu, well, 
I hope kindly put a video up later on this group. And you'll see how understanding some inevitably will sometimes involve some deduction. So mm -hmm. as soon as we make a deduction in doing our understanding, maybe our understanding, we need to support our deduction with evidence. And that was, you probably missed that. It came mm -hmm. before you. So have a look at, you know, because um, I do want to finish on time. In fact, we're already over time. Um, I okay. did want to say this. If anyone has got further questions, you can contact me directly and we'll discuss further questions so we don't go over time. Thanks. Okay. So, Nina Charlotte, you were saved because of running it out of time. I was going to bring up an excerpt from one of your discussions, but we will save you from that and we will do that privately. Um, if you, I do invite you all, please do join, register with the IMOS Pro Board. Um, you will learn a lot because, you know, I only, when I speak about this, I speak, I'm very self revelatory And some of my videos I will only put as unlisted videos on Pro Board. Uh, like, for example, if I'm giving feedback to uh, devotees who are trying to do the seminars now or doing discussions, like they'll send me their Gita discussions and I'll give feedback. By watching those feedbacks, hopefully it'll improve your own application of the principles, you know. So do join the Pro Board uh, thing and uh, participate. Let's create a, a community of devotees who are really trying to churn Shastra in an evidence-based way with mutual respect and love and uh, really get that that will invoke Krishna um, benedicting us with good intelligence to come to him. So I have said everything I've wanted to say and I've gone five minutes over time. My apologies for that. Anyone who needs to leave straight away, please, please do. Anyone who would like to stay and make any other comments or any roundup, please do speak now. Um, and then once you've all said your bit, we will round up. Yes, Prabhu, Adiganda. Um, may I just uh, have a quick word with yourself and Nila Jala Prabhu, just about the pro board? Um, yes, after this session. Writing. After the uh, session, thank you. Uh, uh, Nilichal, are you okay with that? Are you comfortable? Yeah. So you'll yeah. stop the recording at that point and we'll just have a little chat, yeah? Okay. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, anyone else who has anything they'd like to say? Okay. Thank you so much for attending. Can I just, uh, any feedback from any of you how you found today's session, whether it was garbled or whether it was helpful or how did you find it? Did you I go away with... Go ahead, Lenny. Sorry, I found it quite intense and following it needed a lot of concentration and I did, you know, go off a little bit. <laughs> yes, so yes, I was talking quite that. fast. No, no, I was quite, talking quite fast. Um, but hopefully uh, the video is there. So if, this, if you're interested in the subject matter, when you say intense, you mean jam-packed or kind of like, oh, frightening? It's no, 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 not frightening at all. It's the it's the layers upon layers upon layers of um, understanding, and I couldn't quite follow all the layers. But I think right, I right. just need a little bit of um, need a little time. training in this. Yes. But I found it very interesting um, and enlightening, actually. Fantastic. Fantastic. And it's like little windows opening up in my head. <laughs> Wonderful. I think that's one of the reasons I. I myself am baffled how to give the full Imos training in the, um, according to the Baptist school, because it's, it's like, for example, Adi Ganga uh, and Nilachala, especially, a little bit Kusum, they've, they've gone through the seminar with me, maybe a couple of, maybe I certainly Nilachala has, on a more rudimentary level. And now I'm using this session to go more deep, more deep. And I do think people need to be introduced to the principles at an elementary level, and then once they've practiced a little bit, then you can help them to grasp the principle even more deeply and more deeply. Um, so it's really hard just to give a talk to someone once. It, they need to practice it and then come back and be trained a little bit more deeply again. Yes, so. it, it, it sort of reminded me of when I first started attending some of the classes at the manor. And there would be references to things that I didn't even have any understanding. So I would go away with a very small amount of knowledge, but it was enough to keep me coming back. I and now that. when I do attend classes, 
I can understand vaguely a little bit more about the references, which part refers to which. You know? Right, right, so, right. So, so this is how my introduction to this end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for that feedback. Ananda, thank you so much, friend. Yes, Ananda, my friend. You're muted. You're muted. I'm mute. Can you no. hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yes. So I really love this session. For, for me, it was a very awakening, eye-opening in many levels. But one of the levels is that I realized that I'm, I'm quite sure that I do a lot this commenting without being aware of it even. So I definitely need practice uh, to understand when I'm commenting and when I'm understanding something. Yes. And uh, this is something that um, I think is so much imbibed in me that it's almost uh, became uh, an instinct, <laughs> instinctive behavior, <laughs> which is obviously not a, not a good habit. So I really would like to have more practice on, on yeah. this side of yeah. uh, sticking to understanding. That's one thing. And the other thing that I'm, what I'm still a little bit unsettled about, but I think it will be revealed with time, is how much is it a bona fide uh, thing for a, from a class giver to relate the understanding to his own life experience when he's giving the class? Mm. Is this something what is um, what is justified to do, or it 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 can fall easily into another speculation? Anyway, these things will, I think it will reveal with the time. <laughs> the more the more I learn about the, the method, the, the more things are getting clear. Wonderful, wonderful. So you're saying Thank you. it, has, it has made you more aware of your own tendency to comment and yeah. it's raised other questions about the balance. Where, where is the good balance between using our life experiences to support our understanding and where does that begin to become kind of like a yeah. you know, deviation from the understanding yeah. Yeah. but you're, you're realizing this may not all be in terms of a one-off answer it uh -huh. may be learning to negotiate how to use the principles uh, so that even if we do comment it's augmenting the shastric understanding it's like yeah. adding evidence from our own life experience rather than taking it down a rabbit hole yes yeah. then this exactly. will come with time as you practice yeah, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and I encourage um, Ananda Mai, I encourage Renu, um, that some of the other uh, devotees here who have been doing discussions longer through the pro board, you can connect with them. I know I've tried to link you with different people. The people that you've, I've linked you with are not always available through pro board. You can reach out to others and say, you know, the devotee I normally do discussions with is on holiday right now. I need a discussion partner. Can anyone help me? And I, I really would like to, I think it's a wonderful um, utility. Everything has got its utility in Krishna's service. And I think this is the utility of IT to facilitate uh, to facilitate this hearing about glorifying Krishna together. So we can use Probo like that to reach out to each other and say, look, I'm, my discussion partner's not here right now. Can someone fill in and help me? And uh, we grow like that together. Okay, thank you all so much. Um, I've you. really enjoyed myself. My faces, Banchakalpa, Trubis, Chakrasa, 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 Ch